Yum, yum! In this video, we're going to look at a quick walkthrough of creating a character inside of Adobe Fuse, uh, which is a character generation um, application uh, that ships with Adobe Creative Cloud. Um, it doesn't uh, install necessarily automatically, but if you go look on your Creative Cloud uh, and scroll down uh, to the applications that you can install, look for Adobe Fuse CC. It's a preview, uh, so it's one they haven't fully integrated into the suite, but it is uh, nonetheless there, and everything works well. This is actually something that Adobe had purchased uh, a company called Mixamo, so it was fully working technology uh, when they purchased it. So it made it a little bit easier for them to, you know, integrate and bring this in because it was actually already a fully uh, functioning thing. So we're going to look at creating a character and taking them and importing them into the Mixamo uh, site, which will allow you to create a rig and export uh, a character that you can pretty easily animate. Uh, so we'll just look at that first part of it in this video, and then in another one, we'll look at how to actually bring that into Modo and create uh, some better materials, uh, some better textures, and uh, set everything up so that you get a good render out of uh, characters from this kit. The general idea here is that we go through and uh, select from some preset uh, content pieces to create our characters. And then as we go, or at the end, however you'd like to do it, you can go through and uh, create some uh, some adjustments to uh, to the shape of your characters in order to get them a little bit more fine-tuned for the way that you uh, want them. Now, it's going to start with a stock uh, set of character um, heads is where we'll start, and then we'll move down to torsos, uh, arms, and legs and create those. And you can pretty easily mix and match the different, uh, the different character sets, but I found that you get a little bit better results if you use the ones that uh, go with a set. So, male scan four uh, for the head is going to work best if used with the matching uh, torso, arms, and legs. Now from there you can pretty easily go in and adjust the shape of them to get uh, a character of different proportions, um, but they tend to flow a little bit better if you're using the ones that go with the kit. So uh, I'm going to start here just with fit uh, female fit A uh, and put her in here. Now there are a couple of different kinds of characters. They're going to be the uh, the scan data ones and then there are the other ones like this one. This is uh, not based off of scan data um, and depending on the look that you're going for um, they'll just be a little bit different. The, the scan data ones tend to have a few more uh, kind of general imperfections in the model built into them because they're based off of actual scanned people um, but you know you can pick and choose the things that uh, that work best for you. So you can see that put in uh, the head, and then it's moved us on immediately to the uh, the torso selection. You can always click back to the head uh, down here if you want to go back and reselect, uh, but this gives you um, everything you need to get started. So as far as navigation goes, if you click off of the character and then just click and drag, you'll get a rotation. Um, if you right click and drag, you'll get zoom. And then middle mouse uh, click and drag gives you the uh, the pan functionality to move around. So if you don't have a three button mouse, this can be kind of a pain to navigate in, uh, especially with the middle mouse click because uh, then you can't zoom in on a character and you know navigate to one specific part. So just something to note there. Uh, you'll probably want to be working with a three button mouse on this. All right, so I'm going to go through and just use the the actual same ones from the kit here. So I'm going to use female fit A for the body. We'll just drop that in, give it a second, we'll create the geometry, do the same for the legs. And you notice each time we select something, it, it moves us right on to the next step, which is uh, convenient. Okay, so there we go. Now we've got the whole uh, character actually created here. Now if I zoom in, let's kind of zoom in on the face here so we can see how the adjustments work. So if you mouse over the character, you'll see that you get different areas selected. Okay, and um, each one of these areas can be adjusted kind of in a couple of different directions. So if I go to, you know, say down to uh, the chin area here, if I drag left and right, you can see it's actually going to uh, pull the chin in or out, right? If I do up and down, it's going to change the shape of the chin. So that one is a little better to see. So up and down, you can see it's actually lowering and raising the chin. And then right and left is a little hard to see from the front, but it's uh, it's uh, moving the chin forward and back. So this is something that you'll want to do and adjust your view and then go back and make tweaks and then go around and check from other angles and make sure that you're getting uh, kind of what you want out of it. So um, you can go through and do this with essentially every part of the character. So you can uh, see adjust the nose. This is adjusting the bridge of the nose uh, forward and back. And then it's adjusting the thickness of the bridge. 
So left and right, up and down. So again, this is something that you want to do and just kind of tweak and fine tune. I'm not going to go through the whole character and uh, and adjust everything. Just know that you do have uh, those uh, kind of functionalities for basically the entire character. Most of the main muscle groups, a lot of the facial features, and it will allow you to get uh, the kind of character you want. Even down to uh, kind of silly stuff where if you go down to uh, like the feet here, I can make these like really huge giant feet if I want. So, uh, you know, you can do this with various parts of the character. So you could really um, exaggerate the proportions. If you want something non-realistic, you can definitely go in and do that. So let's go back, get rid of the giant feet, and then we'll move on from here. So uh, the next thing you can do after you've done this, and you can easily skip over this as well, uh, but there is a customize uh, tab here, which will give you a lot of the same control that you have uh, when you're working with the... Um, uh, the the kind of in model options so you have a lot of the same stuff here however there's some interesting stuff inside of the face so uh, I want to make sure that I address this here so if I move in here uh, let's go on the face I'm going to get kind of a three-quarter view of the character here you can see that we have different I uh, different options for expressions. Now, this is something you'll actually have control over once you export into Modo um, or any other 3D application for that matter, but um, this is something that you can start off with here in order to get kind of the look that you're going for. So, uh, you can see here, each one of these sliders is going to do something different with the uh, model. So, there's angry, there's awkward, and some of these are going to work better than others. I find it tends to do a little kind of weird stuff on the cheeks sometimes. If you go all the way up to 100%, usually you want to find something in a lower percentage and it'll work better. Um, you know, cocky gives her a little smirk. Confused, kind of another kind of smirk. Goofy. Um, happy, worried. You know, and you can go in through here and uh, kind of mix and match little bits of uh, different kind of looks in order to get something that is you know, obviously quite different than the original. And it's also going to break the symmetry of the face a little bit. Um, and that's the main thing that I find these are very useful for is you're no longer going to be looking at, um, you know, a character that is pretty much symmetrical left to right. Uh, this is going to break that up quite a bit to give you something I think is a little bit more compelling. Um, so just something to note here. So let's turn down Goofy because I don't want her mouth that open. I want a little bit more cocky and angry maybe. It's a little bit of happy mixed in, so we don't want her to be too angry. All right, so anyway, you get the general idea. Uh, other stuff, you can choose uh, to uh, adjust cross eyes. You can move the lip, lower lip up and down, open and close the mouth. Um, you can roll the upper lip, and then you can also do the, the eyes outward. So all sorts of different controls, and none of these are actually stripped away from the model, like I said, once you import uh, into a 3D application. But it gives you a good starting point from here. All right, you can also choose to randomize these, but uh, I'm not going to get into that right now. It basically just will load up a random set of all of these numbers. Okay, so I think something like that works. Actually, I'm going to tone down kind of all of these a little bit so that we have the same kind of idea, but a little less pronounced. There we go. All right, so moving on, we're going to hop right over into the next tab, which is clothing, because you can obviously go in and adjust that uh, to your heart's content. Okay, so with clothing here, there is not a whole lot, really. Um, it's it's a little bit uh, kind of generalized. The important thing to note here is that you can always go through and change uh, a lot of the texture and things afterwards. So mostly what you should be looking for here um, is the general kind of cut that you want to get of the clothes. So, um, you know, there's different kinds of things that are going to be uh, more or less appropriate depending on your character. I'm going to go with the uh, the, the quarter sleeve t-shirt. It's just kind of general. I think it works pretty well. You'll notice that the uh, textures are really low resolution at first. That's all right. We'll clean up textures here in a little bit. Um, okay, so we've got a good shirt. Uh, let's go down to pants. I think I'll put the athletic pants on there. Yeah, these ones come out a little bit shiny, but again, we can adjust that um, afterwards. So moving on, there's shoes. Um, and let's get mm, boots, maybe. Those ones. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the boots. 
Okay, cool. So uh, moving on here, we've got hairstyles. Now, uh, the hairstyles, again, don't give you a whole lot um, as far as what you're going to uh, get straight out of the box. Uh, but you can look for something that is decent. We can make some tweaks in here and then uh, make more tweaks inside of a 3D application. So uh, I'm just going to go right ahead to a ponytail. Um, notice that the, the hair is like blonde and that doesn't really fit, I don't think, with this character. I want uh, darker hair. Uh, but we'll go ahead and we'll make that change in a moment. Uh, so moving on, we've got hats. I don't really want a hat for her. Um, eyewear, there's all sorts of different glasses, sunglasses, goggles, uh, beards. I don't think she needs a beard. Um, <laughs> we'll continue on. Uh, gloves, there's a couple different kinds of gloves. I kind of like these uh, fingerless gloves. I think they add a nice, uh, just a little bit of uh, break up to the, to the character's hands. I think it works pretty well. Uh, the other thing is that the, the articulation on the hands in the rig uh, that will be created is not super great. So I find that the gloves, uh, some kind of gloves at least, kind of helps to uh, improve the overall look because you tend to get a little bit of roundiness on the joints anyway. And so wearing a glove actually hides a bit of that. Okay, so let's do that. And she doesn't need a mask, although I can show you that there are these different surgical mask, gas mask, that kind of thing. Uh, but, you know, you get the general idea. You can go and put that stuff on as uh, you want. Uh, just note, if you're putting stuff like a full hood on or something like that, you may want to get rid of the hair. So just a note, you can get rid of any item that you put on just by selecting it and then hitting the delete key. I'm going to leave the hair on because I don't want to leave it. But um, if you want to get rid of something entirely, select it so that it highlights hit delete and then you're good to go okay so the next thing that we're going to do here is actually go in and adjust texture and there's a lot that you can do with the texture inside of here and i'm just going to kind of touch on it uh briefly because i want you to uh, get the idea of what's possible uh, but there's a lot of kind of neat stuff built into here so uh, the first thing to look at and this is something you'll want to switch i would say later after you have kind of dialed in um the 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 overall details that you want because it's going to slow you down as you're working. Uh, but before you're finished with the character, go through and set all of the textures to the highest resolution, which is uh, 2048 by 2048. Now, if you don't see 2048 by 2048, that's not on by default. Um, all you have to do is go to Edit and Preferences. And you have two options here that I think are a good idea to turn on. One is to turn your packed texture maps up to 4096. Um, we're actually not going to use that in this uh, in this lesson, but uh, that's an option we can look at later. And then allow 2048 by 2048 clothing textures. It says it's experimental. Um, I've found that it doesn't give me any issues on export, so I'm going to leave that checked. It's unchecked by default. That way I can get higher quality textures once I'm ready to um, actually render our character. So let's go ahead and click OK. And now uh, let's look at some of the options that we've got. So if we look here, you know, we've got general things for, I uh, see we can uh, turn up and down detail. And see that's basically going to be kind of the contrast of the highlights, uh, the overall texture of the hair, that kind of stuff. Uh, there is normal map intensity, which is going to be with kind of the fine-tuned details. And you can see it just kind of faintly in there where you actually start to see more uh, kind of hair strands coming out, and that works kind of well. And then roughness is going to be basically how shiny the hair is. So higher roughness values, um, it's going to tend to let the light spread across it. So it's going to seem more matte, more dull uh, in the finish render. And then uh, lower levels is going to seem uh, more shiny. Okay, so I can leave it at a relatively low roughness level, so it's pretty shiny. Uh, and then we have some options for how we're actually controlling the color. And this was important for this character because I didn't want her to have uh, this blonde hair. I thought it was too light. Uh, so there are a couple different ways that we can adjust this. We can uh, play with the hue shift, saturation, and luminosity. Uh, and those are going to give us controls over the colors. So see, as I shift this color, it's actually just giving me different hues of hair. And I kind of wanted to go for kind of a dark, maybe with a little bit of reddish color. So I can do this here, uh, you know, decrease my saturation and then decrease the luminosity. And that's one way that I can do this. Okay. Now another way, and here, let's go back and turn my hue shift back down turn my other stuff back up to where it was. The other way is to just go in and select a color. So I need to go a little bit more over into the kind of reddish colors, maybe not that red. Uh, and then I'm going to darken it up quite a bit. Not too dark. Maybe something like that. All right. 
I think that works pretty well. Now, like I said, you always can go back and make adjustments to this afterwards because in the end, these are just going to turn into uh, image maps and we can go in and adjust the, uh, the image maps all we want. Um, so the other thing that we have control over here are streaks. So um, this is just the different kind of highlights in the hair. Maybe I want a little bit less, um, a little less bright something like that. And then extras, this is just going to be uh, kind of uh, the additional little colors that are showing up inside of the hair. Now, since I've turned down my uh, my contrast or my uh, saturation rather a bit, this isn't going to be as prevalent, but um, I'm just going to leave that for now. So again, you can go back and tweak these all that you want. And now that I'm pretty much done with the hair, I'm going to go ahead and turn up the texture resolution. It'll take it a second to rebuild, uh, but then if you go and zoom in, you should notice that the hair is looking uh, quite a bit nicer as far as the overall detail detail and I think that's pretty cool um, and oh one note higher is uh, with the extras um, if you happen to have something like uh, she has like this uh, scrunchie in her hair this will change the coloration of that extra so I'm gonna give her something blue a little less saturated and a little bit darker something like that I just want it to blend in a little bit more all right so that is something that you have with the extras there so should you have something in their hair you can deal with it that way all right cool so moving on let's go ahead and look at the clothing we'll wrap her back around and uh, go to the skin texture here uh, towards the end so with the clothing we have a lot of stuff that we can really do um, and the first thing I do is I'm going to increase my texture resolution not all the way but a little bit up to 1024 so that I get uh, some decent um, uh, interactivity when I'm working on the textures, but also I still get to see some of the detail. Now, depending on the computer you're working on, you may need to turn that back down uh, to 512 in order to be able to really see it, um, you know, in real time very well. But, you know, just uh, play that by ear based on the system that you're working on. Okay, so in the basic parameters, um, we have a few different things that you can control, and these are going to have to do with how the uh, texture is stretching across the surface. So you can see that based on... Um, Based on this character, we were getting some stretching in the fabric right around here. So by increasing this input warp, it's going to do its best uh, to kind of uh, de-stretch that texture. If you go too far, it can tend to look kind of blurry. So that's when you have to adjust uh, kind of a bit as you go. I think somewhere around there works pretty well. Um, strength of material normals. Now this is going to be uh, the perception of uh, kind of bumpiness in the texture. So if I take this and turn it all the way up just so you can see... Um, it's going to be a bit heavier um, on the kind of the feeling of the texture. So let's turn up the base normals. And there you can see we're starting to get more of the feeling of, um, of kind of the texture of this. I think that's a little overdone, so I'm going to turn this down a little bit. I think something like that works pretty well. Um, okay, and then the last thing on here to look at is the overall roughness. Now, roughness has to do with um, shiny versus matte. Okay, so if I turn roughness all the way down, it's going to look like she's wearing glossy clothes, okay? Which, for some of the different materials, might work well. Uh, if I turn this all the way up to, to 1, we're going to get basically no sheen off of the clothing at all. And I think that comes out a little too uh, flat looking. So, you know, the default is in here around 0.5. Uh, sometimes you can go a little higher and still get something kind of interesting. We're going to play with the, uh, the dirt and wear on this, so it's not going to matter too much in the end. I think I'll just go for kind of middle middle of the road again, and we'll leave it there. Okay, so region scale, I'm not really going to get in too much. This just has to do with tiling of the texture. Um, best thing to do is just kind of play with it a bit yourself, and you can uh, get the idea. Uh, cloth wear. Now, this has to do with adding... Uh, areas of varying color uh, to the uh, to the actual texture. And this is uh, an intelligent map. All of the next ones here that we'll look at are intelligent texture maps that will uh, be based off of curvature and some other maps like that that will help it to uh, guide what's happening with the texture. So if I take my, here, let's close up this region scale. If I turn my wear level, let's start by turning it all the way up so you can see what's going on. So we've got all these kind of light areas, right? And so this is kind of like the, it's supposed to be the idea of adding wear to the fabric, where it's it's going to lose some of its color. It's going to lose some of its uh, shininess, that kind of stuff. Um, so I'll leave it all the way up so we can see the difference here. Uh, next is softness, and that's going to be the transition between the worn cloth and the not worn cloth. So if I turn up my softness more, you'll see that there is a bit more softness uh, in how the transition is, and also some parts will tend to kind of clump together a little bit so that there's a bit less detail to how the wear is looking on there. Um, 
So there you get that idea. Uh, hue is going to control how, how much color is actually in, uh, in the worn areas. Uh, saturation uh, is going to be um, this is what the color is, is hue, how much color is the saturation. I'm not going to worry about either of those. Um, uh, the cloth wear lightness has to do with, you know, how much contrast there is. Set at 0.5, it's going to be essentially the same color as the original. So it just kind of blends in and disappears when I put it to 0.5. Uh, but if I increase this a little bit, if it will let me just go up a little bit, there you go. It's like... 0.55 you can see we get a little bit of wear if we go really high it'll get white if we go really low it'll actually invert and it'll make the areas darker uh, I'm going to go on the side of making it just a little bit darker so I'm going to go up to maybe 46 maybe 47 and sometimes this will be a little bit finicky where 40, uh, 0.46 will look different uh, if you go to it and then come back and try it again, it will look different. So you kind of have to play with this a little bit. And do take note that, like I said, this is in their preview. Uh, and so even though it was fully working technology, it doesn't always come in perfectly. So it's just something that you have to keep in mind here. So let's go ahead and I want this to just be a little darker. Maybe we'll go to 49. There you go. You're getting a little bit of wear now. So you can see the wear is just coming across as kind of a little bit of grunge. I think I'm going to go to 0.48, so it's just a little bit darker. And you can see even that is kind of a big jump. 0.48. And it's not letting me dial that in. So, uh, you know, like I said, not going to be perfect, but you can spend a little time kind of playing with it until you get the, uh, the look that you're after. I'm just going to leave it there. And, you know, so you have options for doing that with all the different kind of pieces of the fabric, which uh, can be pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and close that down. Uh, and the next thing, and kind of the last thing that we'll look at here is the dirt wear. So uh, this is kind of cool because this will allow you to um, get, you know, varying amounts of actual, you know, dirtiness on the uh, the clothing. And this also, just like the other one, is based off of uh, maps that look at the curvature of the uh, cloth so that uh, you're going to get dirt and grime is going to come into the areas where it would kind of naturally collect based on how the clothes are hanging on your character. So this is pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to turn this up. You can see pretty high. If I go all the way up, it's going to look essentially like she's just completely covered uh, in dirt. But if we go down to something a little bit more medium, so maybe 0.6 something, you can see that we get a nice amount of dirt on here. can change the color of the dirt. Uh, we can change the contrast, which is kind of like the softness uh, in the other one. This is going to be how it blends with the original. Um, you can make it mask over the edges. Um, let's see. Uh, the roughness is going to control if uh, the dirt that's collecting is matte or shiny. So uh, just like the roughness in the other areas, if we put it to a lower level, it's going to come across looking more wet. So you can see now it looks more like it's mud. But if we go the other way to a really high value, now it looks very flat. So it's looking like, um, you know, it's more like dust. So depending on the environment that you want your character in, uh, you can dial in the level that is appropriate. So there we go. I think that works for now. Uh, let's continue on here. And, you know, again, just like with the other stuff with the cloth where you can uh, dial it in for specific areas of it. So I think I'm going to just pull up the amount a little bit, uh, the contrast maybe up just a little bit and leave that as is. Okay, so now that I'm all done pretty much with everything going in there, again, I'm gonna go ahead and bump up the texture. It will take it a minute to rebuild and then you'll get all of your same settings, but applied to a higher uh, quality texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing here with the pants, but I'm gonna um, just fast forward so that you can see this all, all matched up uh, when it's done. All right, so now I've got me in and I've added uh, some extra dirt and wear to both the boots and the pants. And right now I've actually got the texture at 1024 on all three of those items. Um, I, I found that you are a little bit more prone to crash if you're uh, making a bunch of adjustments while at the 2048 by 2048. So we're actually going to leave it at that level until it's um, until we're all done and then we're ready to export will increase the resolution. Um, so continue on. Now let's actually have a look at the skin. 
So uh, now let's uh, actually go in here and looking at the skin, uh, we have a couple of options. So we can control the texture resolution. Same thing, I'm going to leave it at 1024 while we're editing, and then when we're all done, we'll increase that to 2048. Um, but there is a lot that goes on with the skin texture. So I'm not going to go in through everything here today, uh, but just so you get the idea, you've got overall um, coloration of the skin. Uh, you can do aging of the skin, see I can make her look really old, uh, which basically just has another normal map that lays on top, uh, and this adjusts the intensity. I want to add a little bit of age, uh, but not a ton. Just so that we get a little bit more texture on the skin. Maybe something about like that actually works just a little bit more. Um, okay, so you can go down and really just kind of adjust all of these uh, as much as you want in order to see how this is going to work. Now, one thing to note is there is an option here for uh, Bake AO in Diffuse. That's ambient occlusion, which is a kind of generalized shadow that comes uh, from, you know, if you were to have a light coming from all angles, where would the shadows fall? So what this is going to do here, if I take this and we increase it, what you'll see is the areas that are more um, kind of uh, concave areas that are more hidden in like around the nose back here around the ears and things like that we'll get a little bit of extra shade put onto those um, right on the texture now we're going to render with good lighting and stuff so we're not going to uh, put that in here but if you're going to go to something like a real-time engine uh, that might be you know a good option for uh, for working on that so mostly what I want to look at here is I want to look at uh, the skin variation and then uh, the sun effects because uh, we've got her uh, you know, with a lot of uh, grunge and wear on the clothing. So we're going to kind of match that up with uh, the character's skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the skin variation settings, which are down here on the lower half uh, of the skin settings. And the first thing you see here uh, that I'm going to look at is the skin variation lightness. And you can see if I turn this down really low, you can kind of start to see we're getting kind of these darker areas, all right? So if I do the same thing the other way, you can see that we're getting kind of these uh, more bleached out areas. So depending on what you're working on with the character, this could be something you could really use. So I'm going to go a little lower than the default, but not too low. Basically, I want to look as if, uh, you know, she's been out in the desert or something. Uh, and then we can also control the hue and the saturation. Um, I'm not going to adjust those right now. I'm going to mostly go with uh, just the overall lightness values. And I think that'll work. But if you want to give something like, uh, you know, here, let me crank the saturation for a moment. Um, if you want to go with the idea that there is something uh, kind of that has been uh, collecting on your character. So in this case, uh, you know, I've got a lot of kind of brownish earth tones in there. I could go find something in kind of uh, the earth tony region. It's going to be somewhere right about in there. And then obviously my saturation is a little too high. You can see um, as I do that, you'll notice it actually blends a little bit more. So in that case, I would want to pull the brightness down or the lightness rather down a little bit. And then you get the feel that this is um, kind of like dirt and where coming from your character being out. Um, so you have that here under your skin variation. That's just a secondary color that's going to lay on top of the existing color um, of your character. So a lot of other stuff here that you can obviously just go and play with and I'm not going to worry about for now. Let's go ahead and close that up. And then we're going to look at the sun effects. So you can see here we've got a sun amount. We've got suntan visibility and uh, all the same kind of things. Hue, saturation, lightness, um, sun blemishes, uh, so we got all sorts of stuff that we can adjust here. So if I take this down, let's put the sun amount down to zero just to start here. You see that uh, we have a relatively even coloration across her skin aside from that secondary color uh, that we've added on. But if I increase this and let's take the tan lightness and pull it down, you actually start to see these darker tones uh, coming in. Now this is a little bit more subtle um, at its default settings of hue and saturation than, uh, than the secondary skin color. Uh, but now if I were to take my, uh, let's, let's, see, let's pull my saturation up here so we can kind of see how this is working. Um, we can adjust this so that we get something like, uh, you know, more like a sunburn. Some it can look more like it's tanned. Uh, and you go through here and make these adjustments. Again, mostly it's going to be just uh, going in and adjusting the things and, uh, and testing and playing to see what is going to work uh, for your specific character. And keep in mind, as you make these changes, um, 
sometimes it's a good idea to do one thing at a time. Give it a second. Make sure that you're getting a full update here. If you see a little spinny disk up here, it means it's actually updating the texture. So uh, if you're going too fast at too high a resolution, uh, one, you won't be able to know what the specific changes you're making are doing uh, unless you're doing them uh, one at a time. And two, you can actually cause it to crash, especially if you've opted to go up to the higher resolution textures uh, before you're finished with the model. So I'm going to take just a moment here to uh, finish adjusting uh, the overall look here and then we'll move on to uh, getting ready to export the character. Okay, I think that about does it uh, for our character in general. I've got the model pretty much where I want it uh, before exporting. Um, so, you know, depending on the style that you're looking for, you have quite a bit of um, options for variation. You can change the coloring of all the clothing. Uh, you can change uh, coloration for skin, hair, and everything else. Uh, but it gives you some nice uh, nice starting points. And then you can go in and, uh, and make it look better uh, inside of your 3D application. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. Uh, it's important to remember to save. Like I said, this does get some instability issues if you're turning on the uh, the stuff like the, the higher resolution textures. Uh, but now that I've got it saved and I'm ready, I'm going to go ahead and increase my textures. I'm going to go through and do this on all of the pieces, and then we're going to be ready to export. So let's go up to 2048 on all of the separate pieces here. And you notice it will just remove the texture entirely for a moment, and then it will actually just go back and reapply it um, because it's creating an entirely new image map to go with this. So let's go ahead and set all these up. All right, so once you have your characters built and all set up uh, and customized inside of Fuse, uh, we can now take them and export them. So in order to do this, we're going to uh, use the Save to Mixamo option. Now, you have to make sure that you um, are using Adobe Creative Cloud and that you're logged in um, to the Creative Cloud app so that you can uh, actually upload this. Uh, so I'm um, all logged in, so I'm going to go ahead and click um, Save. And then you'll get uh, a dialog box here to name your characters. So let's call this, um, this is kind of my Laura Croft character. So we'll call this Tomb Raider. There we go. And we'll click Save. And now it's going to take this and it's going to export it and upload it uh, into uh, the Mixamo site so that we can actually go ahead and work on it. Now sometimes this will take a minute to upload, but uh, once it's all set, uh, it will go through all the steps that it needs to be able to prepare uh, your model on Mixamo to actually start applying animation data to it and to uh, export a rigged character that you can uh, animate inside of another 3D application. Uh, so once this is all done, uh, it will pop up to the Mixamo site. Now one side note here, I did have to reduce uh, the resolution of some of the textures. So I left the shirt at 2048 because that's going to be something that you'll see a little bit more often as well as the texture for the skin. Uh, but I put the pants and the boots and the gloves down to 1024. Uh, so that way it, it uh, did happen to upload a bit better uh, before it would just hang on the upload. So if that does happen and you're trying to upload and it's uh, not going through, then you may need to lower the resolution of some of your textures. So uh, let me get this window size so that it fits in here. And uh, as soon as this is all uploaded, it's going to uh, pull it into the auto rigger, which is going to take uh, and apply a real standardized skeleton to the geometry that you got. Now, since this is geometry that was created inside of Fuse, um, it's pretty much set up uh, pretty well to just work directly uh, with Mixamo. So uh, we'll give this a minute to import, and then we'll look at the options for setting up your rig and then attaching some animations. All right, so now my character's in. Now, they're not going to look exactly right here inside of this uh, real-time preview, but you don't really have to worry about that. Uh, textures will look the, the same way that they did inside of Fuse, and then they'll look even better once we actually get them set up and optimized uh, for a real 3D application. Uh, but this is going to give us a couple of different options. Um, now, one here is to include facial blend shapes, and we want to leave that on because that will give us the, uh, the opportunity to do some uh, facial animation inside of a 3D application. If you turn it off, it will make the model a little bit lighter, uh, but you lose those options on export. Uh, now, the next thing that you can look at here is the uh, the detail of the skeleton. So uh, there's a default standard skeleton that's going to come with uh, hands that have uh, fully uh, fully rigged fingers so that you can uh, adjust the hand positions. Um, you can also choose to do um, more simplified uh, fingers, um, even more simplified fingers, or no fingers at all, which is going to give you just basically a hand position. And then you can move and animate the character, uh, but you won't be able to, uh, by default at least, uh, animate the fingers. Now, for the most part, unless you have a real specific reason not to, so I suggest to leave that at default. And then we'll go ahead and click Finish. And this is going to um, just give us a little bit of extra info here. And now we're actually ready to animate. 
So what you'll be greeted with here once you have your character uh, set up with the rig is a bunch of preset poses and animations uh, that you can apply right to the character. So poses are going to be static, so if you just click on them, it's going to actually put the character into that pose. Now, some of these poses uh, may or may not work well, depending on uh, the actual textures and models that you have set up. Uh, now, once we get this into uh, Modo, we're actually going to turn it into subdivision surfaces. So some of these things like the knee joint looking um, kind of rough here with the low polygon count will be fixed. Uh, but uh, some of the stretching and things like that, you know, you just have to kind of play these things by ear whether or not they're going to be uh, appropriate and look good on your character. Notice that um, also this doesn't work super well with uh, the way that the ankle works with that boot. So it looks almost like she's broken her ankle. So that wouldn't be a, a good one to use. But you can kind of click through here and fairly easily find stuff that, uh, that will work for your character. See, so that one actually is looking pretty good. All right, so if you want to just get uh, some uh, dynamic poses, you can pretty easily go through here and uh, and find some stuff. There are also uh, animations. So I'm going to click over to just animations here. And then I'm going to look down and find, see, one where she's in place, but something like a static pose. There you go, talking. So... She just posed and has some hand gestures and she talks. You can see the number of frames for the animation down here. Uh, there are some things that you can uh, you can adjust here. And these are real simple controls and they're just uh, basically click and drag. So I'm not going to go through these here, but uh, you can play with these to kind of adjust um, your character as needed. So uh, there are a ton of animations here. So uh, just know that you have a lot of options that you can work with. You can also type in stuff in search. So if I put in something like idle, um, it's going to give me all of the idle poses uh, and animations. So you know, if I were to take something like, oh, here you go, ninja idle. I like that. So that's actually a pretty cool one. Uh, so when you find stuff that you like, uh, you can just click add to pack. And then it's going to put that in there and attach it to the character. Now, I'm not sure if this one's going to work with her boot, but um, I don't know if I'm going to be focusing on her shoe anyway. Uh, this would be you know, more like if you're focusing up here, this one's going to work pretty well. But you can go through and you can add as many poses as you want here to your character. And then those will be included uh, in a pack and you can download them um, for use inside of 3D. So um, I think I'm going to put holding idle in here. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. So we're going to add that one to the pack. And we're just going to click Save or Add to My Assets. Um, and then we can go to View and Download. And we'll have our character here. I can choose Q Download. Um, I'm going to leave everything here at the default settings. And then we'll just click on Q Download again. And now you can see I've got my Tomb Raider here. It's processing. As soon as that's done, we'll get a download button and we can uh, take that and then we can pull the FBX into Moto. And really that's it as far as the uh, the basic work goes. So once you actually have your character done and designed in Fuse, it's pretty easy to take and bring it in, uh, add in any animations that you want uh, or poses. Now the cool thing is, is you can also take and delete any of the animation that comes in um, or you can do a character without any animation on it and then you can animate them. Uh, the, the rig that's attached will fully import into Modo so that you can uh, start animating right away. So uh, that does it for this one. I'm going to do another one actually getting the character into Modo um, and some of the options that you have to make it look better, uh, including adding subdivision surfaces, cleaning up the textures, uh, improving the materials that are attached to the textures, and generally just getting something that is going to render a bit better. Thanks, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Yum, yum!